So why is it that I use uh, two different Bible programs? I use Accordance and I use Logos. Well, this will be mainly about Logos, but I sort of need to give you some history to explain why would you have two of obviously the most high-powered programs. I mean, as I think about it, I figure you've got Bible Works, you've got Logos, you've got Accordance, uh, you've got Olive Tree as well. I've got Olive Tree too, but I got that because I had a Palm device back in the day. I think there's a lot of folks like me who are rather geeky and uh, have been using computers since computers weren't a whole lot of fun to use. I mean, my first computer um, was a compact portable. Weighed about 45 pounds, about the size of a Singer sewing machine, had two 360K floppy disks and uh, no hard drive and a six inch green monitor. <laughs> so when you've been at this for decades, uh, you end up with growing pains. And that's what happened to me. I mean, I, I, I got Bible Works at version two point something or maybe even earlier than that, now that I think about it. And right then, something called Libronics came to my attention. The Libronics library system. And, and there were all these neat resources like uh, the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament and uh, eventually the uh, uh, Theological Journals library. They were all in Libronics, which became, over time, Logos. And so it wasn't a choice on my part. Um, it just happened over time, over decades, literally. And then uh, the other thing that happened was uh, I got kicked out of the, uh, the Windows world by something called Windows Vista. Remember that disaster? Uh -huh, yeah. Um, and so I ended up going to Mac. And when I went to Mac, I, uh, at first, you know, you get the Windows emulator and you're trying to run all your old Windows programs. And you eventually discover that native Mac programs work a lot better. Um, and I, I contacted the Bible Works guys, and they said, we're never going to Mac. And um, uh, right around then, Logos decided to go both directions. They sort of saw ahead a little bit better. And man, those first few, whew, those first few Mac versions whew, were disasters. But um, eventually, uh, I had to move over uh, from Bible Works to Accordance. Um, and I still had Logos. And so as a result, I, I have some resources, uh, some expensive resources, I have in both Accordance and in Logos. And there will be a lot of times that I will have both programs open. And uh, is that ideal? Well, no, but I, I don't know really what I, I could have done about it without knowing the future, basically, uh, because that's just the way things happen. And so uh, we've, we've come to Logos 6 now. And uh, there's all sorts of reviews out there for people who've gone to the classes and learned all the things. I mean, honestly, all the big programs we have now, Accordance, Bible Works, Logos, um, uh, even Olive Tree, even though I got into Olive Tree because I had a Palm device. You know, remember those? <laughs> um, and, and now they're trying to go in, you know, get in the same area. I mean, the, the resources we have available to us now are absolutely positively incredible. It is so exciting to me, especially when I'm doing any type of street ministry or, you know, I'm in a mosque someplace in, around the world. Uh, you know, I can, I can pull up on my, on my smartphone, uh, on my Logos library. Uh, I can, I can pull up, um, uh, in my iPad, whatever, all sorts of textual information. It's just, it's just stuff that wasn't available only 10 years ago uh, is now all over the place. It's, it's just an incredible uh, leap forward. But man, these are high-powered programs, and I will, I will admit to you right now, I don't, I don't even, I can't even begin uh, to claim any kind of level of expertise in all the ins and outs of Logos or any, any of the other programs. Um, I, I wish I had time to learn all that stuff, but I just don't. I, I, I would like to know more. And I know they all make videos available and all that kind of stuff, but you know, when you've got my schedule, it's just it's a bit of a challenge. Be that as it may, uh, something happened uh, that uh, really got me wanting to make this quick video about Logos 6. And uh, on the last dividing line that I did, I wanted to explain 
what happened in the Bible concerning the death of Goliath. I had wanted to explain it in a preceding program because some of you may recall, especially if you see this down the road, the Newsweek hit piece on the Bible by Kurt Eichenwald um, that I spent, oh, I don't know, three hours minimally responding to on the dividing line. And uh, he raised that issue. So I was going to respond to it. And then I started realizing, man, this is, this is really hard to explain. Uh, even though we're doing video now on, on the dividing line stuff, it's, it's really hard to explain. And it's going to take a lot of time to put together. I wanted to put together some slides and keynote and stuff like that. Well, I decided not to do it. And then Sam Gipp uh, put out a video. Well, actually, he put it out a few weeks ago. And I, I got around to watching Sam Gipp's new King James Only video. And guess what it was about? It was about the exact same issue. Uh, obviously from a different perspective than Eichenwald, but still erroneous. And so I'm like, all right, I need, I need to address this. So I sit down and I start trying to work on it. And I'm exporting the, the Hebrew and I'm trying to put it in Keynote. And man, Keynote just will not allow me to edit Hebrew. It just, it just it's sitting there going, nope, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm not going to let you change the color there, move this there. No, 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 no. And I'm not even going to put the cursor in the right place. I ended up having to use text edit on Mac and outline stuff, and it worked, but uh, that's what I was sort of reduced to. Well, once people started watching The Dividing Line, hit that and watched it live, on Twitter, I start getting all these people going, uh, did you know there's something in Lagos about this? And, you know, finally I click on it, and I'm, I'm trying to see how to download the thing, and I'm really confused, and finally somebody in Twitter says, what's well, part of the base package? And I have a whole lot more than the base package. And so I fired it up, and I'm going to put it up on the screen now. Who killed Goliath? And, uh, you know, 1 Samuel 17 says David killed Goliath, and that's the whole story, obviously. 2 Samuel 21, 19 says Elhanan killed Goliath. And 1 Chronicles 25 says Elhanan killed Lami, Goliath's brother. Which is right? And then you, uh, you, you go through. You can click on next down here. And uh, here's... Then it uses color, which is what I wanted to be able to do, um, and gives you First Chronicles 25, and then compares it to Second Samuel 21, 19. And then you bring in the, uh, the Hebrew, and you're able to bring in color uh, with it as well. And it's explaining all the stuff that I explained on the dividing line. Uh, it's, it's explaining how, what... Ditography was that the movement uh, of of Weaver's beam uh, between the two texts, uh, between what we believe to be the original accurate text and what you end up with in First Samuel, um, and it only appears uh, twice in Second Samuel. Uh, did I say First Samuel? Second Samuel twenty one nineteen, and uh, so I covered that. And then you have, then it shows this strange reduplication that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, and then it uh, talks about the direct object marker um, and how this became uh, Lami, uh, became Bethlehemite. And uh, then Aki becomes the direct object, so that Goliath becomes direct object of uh, the verb to kill. Uh, again, showed all of this and then you get to the last one and here's all of the here's all of the uh, relevant terms in the proper colors uh, you know you've got the object with you know here and here Bethlehemite from here I, I mean it's just really really well done uh, I was really really impressed and um, uh, it, it also is sort of cool that what I presented uh, I didn't even know about this, and you pull this up, and voila, hey, look at that. That uh, James White guy actually might know what he's talking about, about a couple of these things, anyways. And so I really appreciated the folks who pointed this out to me, and obviously, if I had known about it, uh, this is what I would have used. Um, I'm not sure how I could have maybe... The, the only thing here is now I'd have to sit here and go, I wonder if I can... Oh, yeah, I bet you I can. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there you go. All right. See, <laughs> this is a live thing. What can I say? Um, <clears throat> uh, made it made it a little bit larger uh, because uh, when we're on the dividing line, that makes it easier to see on the, on the video. So really cool thing. And I'm sure Logos 6 has a bunch of stuff like this in there that if I had time to watch videos and take classes, I would be able to discover. Uh, and you might have more time than I do, and you might really benefit from this kind of stuff. But there is, I will close with the other thing that I really, really, really like about Logos 6. Everybody knew when I got it because of this feature. Let's say you're reading through uh, 365 days with Spurgeon, okay? And no one was a wordsmith like Charles Haddon Spurgeon, right? And so I'm into social media these days. I finally got dragged kicking and screaming uh, onto Facebook. I've been on Twitter since, what, 08, 09? I think July of 09, something like that. And uh, it's a good way to communicate with people. And so there are a lot of times I want to share something on Twitter or Facebook or something like that. And so let's say you're reading along here and uh, you see something you want to quote. So I've already, here's, here's, a, here's a section here, and I, I select it, and it says, Rest also in his immutability, that sure anchorage amid the troubled sea of life. You have changes every day. He never changes. Great stuff, okay? So I'd like to, I'd like to tweet that out or uh, put it on Facebook or something. All right, so what you do is you right-click on it, and there's this new feature called Visual Copy. Now watch this. Opens up Visual Copy, and what's really cool is it knows this is Spurgeon. It knows this is Spurgeon. Now sometimes you have to put, uh, I've, I've used this for other things, sometimes you have to put an author in. Um, it doesn't automatically know who the author is, and so there won't be pictures and stuff. But then look over here. There's all these different backgrounds and stuff uh, that you can put in, uh, different Pictures, well, that's a slightly different picture of Spurgeon. Uh, and then some that don't have pictures down here. But uh, let's, let's go, I like this one, let's go, let's go here. And uh, so there's what it looks like. Rest also, there, there's, there's the quote, so on and so forth. And then uh, let's, uh, let's tweet this one, okay? So you just hit Twitter, and of course I've already set it up to, to do its thing. And you know, the first time you do it, you have to link it and you know, do all that kind of stuff. And so it's going to put that on my Twitter feed. And uh, there you go. And I'm going to tweet that out. And uh, ta-da. And uh, there's, there's, there's how that works. So that is really cool. And of course, the really nice thing, it's not just for social media, but you can send these things to uh, Proclaim uh, Church Presentation Software, which I don't have, PowerPoint and Keynote. So it, 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 it knows, I don't know if it knows that I have PowerPoint and Keynote or if it's just those are just default, I don't know. Um, but talk about a neat way to create slides in your presentation straight out of the text you have. Now, let me, let me just you know, point out to you, Logos is my library. Uh, just not because I looked at Logos and I looked at Accordance and I looked at this, looked at that, and made decisions. It's just the way it developed over time. And so I have, the last time I ran a PDF of the bibliography of my Logos library, it was, cl it was closing in on 400 pages long. I don't even know how many resources I have. I wish I had everything that I have on Kindle in Logos. Because at least when you've got it in Logos, it's fully searchable. You'll be able to find what's inside of it. And that is a tremendous advantage. So that's, it's my portable library. I mean, I, I have a huge paper library, but the first place I go is Logos because that's where you're going to be able to dig the deepest and get the most direct and, and fast uh, citations and quotations. So Logos 6 is awesome. It's great. I wish I knew more about it. <laughs> uh, but uh, the reality is it's great stuff. And hopefully that's been helpful to some of you uh, to know a little bit about the background and uh, a little about some of the things you can do with it. So uh, thanks for watching. God bless.